Let's make collaborating across teams easier than ever by using team folders. The genius of team folders is that they create a centralized location where team members can consistently access the documents they need on a regular basis. For daily stand-ups or monthly check-ins, this ease of access can improve efficiency and reduce stress because you won't need to wait for someone to approve your access request, which adds extra time and steps, and you won't need to worry about losing important documents if a colleague moves to a different company or project because everything is safely stored and conveniently shared in team folders. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about how. Creating a team folder is as simple as right-clicking on your team folder option from the Documents tab and selecting New Team Folder. Note that admins can apply restrictions to who can create and delete team folders. So if you don't see the option to create a team folder, this just means your admin has not enabled this capability. Next, we'll cover team folder ownership. One of the most important things to know about the team folder is that it is not individually owned. This new team folder I created actually belongs to the parent enterprise account. This functionality enables a tier of ownership at the enterprise level so that if I leave the company or if I move to a different project, I'm not taking all of my working documents with me. Everything is safely stored and owned by the team folder for the rest of the team to access. Let's talk a little bit more about collaboration. If I'm going to create a repository of working documents for my colleagues in a team folder, I need to make sure they're added as collaborators or owners. In this case, I'll add my team members, Tori, Mason, and Colin. You can see here that now we all have edit and sharing permission for the team folder, which means we all have the ability to add or remove collaborators and manage, which means add, delete, edit, or share documents within the team folder. You can also manage the subfolders within your team folder, but note that you won't be able to share subfolders within your team folder at this time. A subfolder will have the same permissions as the parent team folder. Because of this functionality, we recommend that when you go to create a Lucid document, decide if it's a document you should be the sole owner of, or if it's something the team should own as a whole. If it is the latter, drag and drop the document over to the team folder right away. If you know from the get-go that it will be a document the team needs access to, just create it directly in the team folder. So what could this look like for cross-functional collaboration? If you have edit access to a team folder, you'll be able to edit all documents and boards within the team folder. However, if you have view-only access to the team folder, then one of the owners of the team folder can grant you edit access to a specific document or board within that team folder. For example, let's say I want to share my team folder with my colleague Amy in the Solutions Consulting Department. I want her to be able to view the documents in our team folder, but not edit them. I would simply share the team folder with her and then change her permissions. However, if I need Amy's advice on a project I'm working on and I want her to be able to edit one of the documents in the team folder, I would go to the sharing permissions inside that specific document and give Amy the access she needs. Note that you can assign different permissions to documents and boards within team folders, like this situation with Amy, but subfolders within team folders will always have the same permissions as the parent. So if Amy has view only access to the parent team folder, I can allow her edit access to individual documents, but not to a subfolder. Her subfolder permissions will always be the same as the parent folder. So what's the difference between my documents shared with me and team folders? You'll see all three of these categories on your homepage. So let's talk about how they all work together. As mentioned earlier, if I want to move a document from my documents to our team folder, I just click, drag, and drop. A window will pop up warning me that the permissions will change. I select move, and that's it. Permissions will change automatically to reflect the settings in my team folder and my colleagues will gain access. Now the other way around. Let's say I want to drag a document or board outside of my new team folder and into my personal documents so that I can work on it individually for a while. 
When I do this, you'll see that a message pops up warning me that I will become the new document owner and my colleagues will lose access. Keep in mind that I'm only able to move this document to my individual folder because I have edit permissions for both the document and the team folder. If I had more limited access, like view only, I would not be able to move it. While both shared folders and team folders are designed for collaboration, ownership looks different with shared folders being individually owned and team folders being owned by the account. With that in mind, if you move a document or board from a shared folder into a team folder, collaborators on the shared folder will lose access and collaborators on the team folder will gain access. However, if you have shared a document or board within that shared folder directly with a collaborator, then your collaborator will maintain access to that document even if the document is dragged into a team folder. Now that you know how team folders operate, let's finish off with a helpful tip for using team folders alongside templates. I've got my new team folder all set up. We've got our working documents, but I'm noticing that we all create our blueprint documents differently. In order to work more efficiently, I'm going to create a template for blueprints in our team folder so that whenever anyone creates a blueprint for a new resource we're creating, the structure is consistent and the rest of the team can quickly understand the vision captured in the blueprint. Now, no one has to recreate their own blueprint document every time we start planning to develop a new resource. And in case we need to look back at a blueprint created by someone that has moved to a different department, a record of all the blueprints created to date stays with the team. Now it's your turn to use team folders to better connect, collaborate, and build cohesion across your business. For more resources, be sure to visit our training website at training.lucid.co. Thanks for watching.